Commission Minister is out there. Yeah. He's speaking. He's speaking. Let's uh, speaking. take a listen to him. Okay. Five parts. First, we want to give a quick update on the heightened enforcement um, of the stay-at-home orders. It's been about some 55 and a half hours since the stay-at-home orders kicked in or the restrictions properly so-called kicked in. Uh, we want to give a quick update. The Joint Operations Command that is handling it has asked Brigadier General A.Y. Nsia, General Officer Commanding Headquarters Southern Command uh, in Kweshi here in Accra to join us with a quick update on uh, compliance and enforcement on that. We'll get into that. Um, we have also announced that we're embarking on what we call an enhanced testing program, an enhanced testing program. And we are noticing um, that down the value chain, it is being interpreted in some quarters as compulsory testing and related matters. We want to provide some clarification on what this enhanced testing program is. There are also concerns about providing for the homeless and the vulnerable at this point in time, especially when in about 40 MMDAs uh, we have imposed restrictions. How are we providing for the homeless and the vulnerable? We have some answers to provide on that. The government of Ghana is also rolling out a COVID-19 information contact center to make it easier for flow of information also at the retail level. And uh, I'll give you some more details on that. And then finally, if you are paying attention to our official website that we are using for this purpose, the um, Ghana Health Service website, you'll notice that we are providing some further nuancing or further details in terms of the information we put out there. So the 161 updated us at, uh, last night. You'll find that there's a deeper detail and would explain why we are providing some more details uh, in that regard. It's been about 55 hours since the imposition of restrictions on movement in about 40 MMDAs in the greater Accra and greater Kumasi areas. The restrictions were imposed for two main purposes. One, to slow down or to halt a potential community spread. To slow it down or to halt it. Two, and more importantly, to embark on an enhanced testing program. The restrictions are being enforced by Joint Police Military Operation. Um, and this morning, about 55 hours into it, I'm sure you have come across a number of specific narratives in the mass media and on social media about compliance and enforcement. It is, however, important also to give you the best eye view, the big picture of compliance and enforcement beyond some of the specifics that you may have seen on television or on social media. I want to invite Brigadier General A.Y. Insia, General Officer Commanding, Headquarters, Southern Command, Kwishi Ridge, Accra, to give us a quick update on that one. Brigadier General, please join us. And please use our sanitizers, etc., before you start and when you are done. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister for Information, Honorable um, Koju Opon Kroma, who is my learned colleague. We were both called to the bar on the same day. My fellow Ghanaians, it is my pleasure and honor to come to your home this morning to give an update of our deployment to ensure the compliance of the directive that is to ensure that we minimize the spread of this uh, pandemic. First of all, I want to say that so far, so good. We are achieving the objective that we set for ourselves. Generally, our population is complying. Of course, in every situation, when it begins, People may not understand what it is. So obviously, some few of them might fall victim to the law. And uh, we are trying our best to make sure everybody understands why this restriction has been imposed. 
First of all, I would say that Accra have been put into zones and uh, we have forward operating bases where we have positioned our soldiers and the police. We have various checkpoints to ensure that those who do not need to come out stay at home. The checkpoints have been very effective. We have several of them. I do not need to go into details about them. They are doing their job both day and night. We have static points at certain places. We have patrols at certain points. There are other areas that we have some challenge because the population there are not cooperating. But I can assure you, as of this morning, everybody understands. And situation is going to the level that we expect. My expectation is that by tomorrow morning, you have less vehicles and less human beings on the roads. That one I can assure you, because the measures we put in place is very effective. I must also emphasize that some videos is gone viral concerning some brutalities uh, being meted out by some soldiers to some civilians. Let me assure my fellow Ghanaians that the soldiers that you have are well trained, they are professionals, they don't brutalize. We have deployed close to a thousand soldiers in the field. Out of this number, we have had only one incident, and that incident had nothing to do with slapping. It is something that we, we thought is not of our standard, and that we are dealing with it. That soldier involved presently have been withdrawn back to the barracks, and I have tasked the military police to go into the matter and investigate. So all the videos you are seeing, they are false. I do not know the intention behind it. But whatever it is, be assured that your soldiers are professionals. They don't brutalize. We don't allow it, and we are never going to allow it. I go around myself and educate them. Before the deployment, I tax the head of the legal department of the Ghana Army to go to the centers where we come them before we deploy them to town. Four different centers. One in Bema, two in Bema Camp, Arakan and the Gunda Barras. Then one in Weji Barras. Then one in Michel Camp. He went around and educated them about our rules of engagement. They were very key to us. I personally went around myself. The commanding officers also spoke to them. So it is never true that our soldiers have been brutalizing our Ghanaians. We will not do it. We, the, we those in command will not permit it. I want to emphasize that most, most of us Ghanaians are religious. We are either Christians or Muslims or traditional religious uh, worshippers. And we know that telling lies about somebody is something that God does not permit. So those who are doing it, I don't know what your agenda is. Please, God does not permit what you are doing. Stop it. And let's encourage our officers and men in the field. Let's encourage them to do the job and do it well. I have got tremendous support from some of the MCEs. They assisted me to get the forward operating bases. And they visit the soldiers regularly. These are the sort of um, collaboration we want from you Ghanaians. Not the type of thing you put on the social media to run us down, to discourage the soldiers who are doing their best to ensure that we all prevent or curtail the spread of this pandemic. Let us support the soldiers in the field. It is in our own interest that we support them. Honorable Minister, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Brigadier General, for that uh, quick update. It says generally there is compliance. Uh, they are also ramping up their uh, enforcement. Um, he admits that there at least has been one incident, um, which is true, of an infraction by a uniformed uh, person. Uh, that person has been withdrawn from the operation, and they are investigating and dealing with it. Uh, later this morning, we will uh, show you a lot of the videos 
that are circulating, which are indeed false, and the context, the actual times and context in which those videos were taken. Um, we also would like to make the point that uh, the state takes very seriously any effort at this time to use misinformation to thwart efforts. And already a number of reports have been made to the police and the investigative agencies to find persons who are in the business of perpetuating this and uh, bring them um, to book. We'll deal with that shortly. But the general picture is that generally people are complying. In the coming days, we will see a lot less vehicular traffic uh, uh, as they get a full grasp, uh, or grasp of the situation on hand. Now, the second matter that we want to deal with this morning is the uh, provision for the homeless and the vulnerable. Shortly, I would invite the uh, Minister responsible for social protection to assist us with a brief on that. But simply, very quickly, in uh, three, the first part of our brief, Yeni Asra Fonina, Edike Dinkomo, Brigadier General in Sia, Anna Acheche Mwache, and say, Beye Don Huri Edu Nunuma Mufi, Jumana Seno, Oma Bomodin, say, Baby Bibria, Soja Fonia, Police for Oha, Omohema, instructions, I didn't mind, and I should be Antinefi, you know, ye this Unipaka Kra now more. A quenya so on Beba Kruma Bay Bibino or Mumran or Munye. A view or science or boy and cocosse and come over Brea Cossus, a soldier for Nam Krumu Bunko for Nia Den and Yenokre. The Nukre woman say, Anya Kra, Omni himself Bakuesia, or Mohena or Modi and Hujuma, but generally no videos need be Brea, Anya Nukra, and no pay in your Brea better than the Achemo. Honorable Minister, the vulnerable and the homeless. Uh, a cohort that we have been speaking about for a while now. We observed instances um, where the vulnerable, including Kaya Ye, have not been too clear on how they will be catered for during this period. The Honorable Minister for Social Protection and Gender, as I mentioned, and the Minister responsible for National Security have completed some work on measures to mitigate the impact of the restrictions on the poor and vulnerable. Honorable Minister, please join us with an update. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. The Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection has come out with mitigating measures to safeguard the health and well-being of the vulnerable groups in Ghana amid the coronavirus pandemic and subsequent lockdown of the affected areas of Ghana. That is Kumasi, Accra, Tema, and Kaswa. In view of the above, the ministry is implementing the following measures. We had meetings with COVID-19 planning committee that the National Security NADMO and the Ministry of Finance updated the CAE data for visiting various marketplaces with their leaders. I personally went around the markets where we have most of our CAE to make sure that at least we have a forehand information on how things are going. Then we went to where they live, so at least we know that some of them are residents, they've rented little apartments and they live in, and we have those who also live on the streets. We have also visited some facilities where we think it's suitable to accommodate our brothers and sisters on the street. We have a few men, that is why I add brothers and sisters on the street. Those with that place of abode, drawing, we are going to keep them for the two weeks that we have imposed these measures. We, are, we currently have like 15,000 of them that we are going to cater for. For those who have the apartment, we'll find ways of sending logistics to them to keep them away from coming to town. And for those that we are going to keep at the identified places that we have found, we are going to cater for them. There's going to be enough food, there's going to be enough water. We have corporate bodies cooking for like 6,000 and other group cooking like for 4,000. So all in all, we have enough food for them. We are also sending food to people on the street. We have like the mental retarded people. We are picking 20 and they are going to be cleaned. 
they are not going to come back on the street. 20 of them, the facility tells us that they can only take 20 and keep clean. And the others we are going to feed. So we are going to give them food every day. Give them food, give them water twice a day. Um, we haven't thought of the, um, the breakfast yet, so we are still looking through. We have drinks and things, so we'll supply them with. And then the medical assistance that we can provide for them also. The food we are going to provide are going to, is going to be hot meal. And I will entreat if we can get the journalists go around and see exactly what we are saying, whether it's being complied. When we keep our brothers and sisters, we are not just going to keep them. We are going to train them on personal hygiene. Because those who came from Kumasi, from Ejusu yesterday, we realized that we need to train them on personal hygiene, how to use the sanitizers. We are providing 15,000 sanitizers. FBA came over to help us. Mimi is here. Mimi, thank you so much. They are providing them with 15,000 sanitizers. The sample is here, I'll show to you, so that at least when we say they should wash their hands with soap and water and use sanitizers, we are not just saying it in vain, but we are providing for them. We are going to give them soap and water also. There are Veronica buckets on the compound where they are going to be kept and make sure that we train them to do the personal hygiene. We are also going to train them on social distancing. It is something that is very important because we realize that they always cluster. So we have to teach them on social um, um, distancing. And that is something that we are going to take very seriously. By keeping them also, what we are going to do is that we're going, we have done a head count. We have the list already. We already have their data. But because some of them have moved before the ban, we cannot use that data. Otherwise, we are going to spend for nothing. So we, that is why we went around to collect the data on the ground, the people who are left behind. Those are the people we are catering for. We register them, give them identity. After everything, we are going to separate the younger ones from the older ones because some of them are really not supposed to be in town doing Kayo. A Kayo are 13 or 12. By the time that lady turns into 20, turns 25, what do you think would happen to her? And so for those younger ones, would let them go back home and go to school because we know that education is free now. So after separation, when we register them, we will not allow any younger lady to be a carrier. We will only use the adults who are using it for work. That is their work. And then make sure that we do the um, screening for them, and then we make sure that they are healthy, even though they, are, they still want to be in that trade of carrier. We are also going to do grooming and deportment for them. We have young ladies. Already we have 20 kaye that we took from the streets who are now attending journalism, who are doing dressmaking, fashion design, and all that. So we are bringing our trainers to come and train them. We are grooming these ones because we know sitting at one place for um, two weeks is going to be a little boring. So we'll make it exciting for them. After that, we do the separation. In Kumasi and Accra, in Accra, where we are going to send the food, um, we are doing Nima, CMB, Malamata Market, Agbogloshi, Tema Station, because some of them live there. So we are doing the Circle, Tipto Lane, Pig Farm, Alaju, Accra, Nyuta, Mamobi, exactly where we think they are. That is where we are sending the food. In Ashanti region also, we are doing the same. We are doing Adiabeba High Tension, Moshizongo, Ayano, Moshizongo, Alaba, Subin, and in all we have Subin, Ship market, Daba station, and all that. We are providing them with food and water. And we are also screening them. Yesterday, we thanked Minister of Health. They were there to do the screening, you know, take their temperature and make sure that if their temperature goes high, then they go for isolation and then they test them. But yesterday, we didn't get any sample of anybody's temperature going high. And so we think we are in the range. Today, when we pick them up, we are going to do the same. And we continue doing it until we, read, we, we are sure that none of them is a threat to the others. So that at least by the time they come out of um, where we are keeping them, we'll know that they are all safe. Uh, Minister? I think that's about all for, for them. We are also taking care of the people with disability. We have over 10,435 people with disability that we are also going to take care of. And then we are also taking care of the mental people that we have said. Um, director is not here. He would have given us the updates of those that we are taking. So basically, that is what we are doing. When we sit and there are any questions, we'll answer. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, thank you for that update. So in terms of feeding, feeding is being provided for. 
they are also being, or they will be given a daily stipend yes. of how much? Okay. Um, it would be good to put that figure out at some point in time, but, but they'll be given a daily stipend at some point. And then um, in terms of accommodation, you've identified places where we are very grateful. We will take some uh, questions for the Honorable the Minister. And then the uh, toiletries and other um, sanitary items as well. Because as the President mentioned, the, uh, the homeless and the vulnerable are a key cohort that we need to also respond to. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to the third part of our brief this morning, which is to, um, and that is a health brief. We want to give a quick update on um, case count and case management, but we want to start off with some clarification on the enhanced testing we've been talking about. You recall that on Sunday, when we provided a brief, we explained what we wanted to do by enhanced testing. Since then, there have been reports that government intends to do compulsory testing or mass testing in some areas. And it's important to really clear this up. Indeed, there are letters uh, that are flying around that have been issued by some local teams um, suggesting that compulsory testing exercises are intended in their areas. For the avoidance of doubt, the government of Ghana just wants to update on what the enhanced testing program is. It has two parts. One, there are those who fall within the basket of what we call the contact tracing and testing. They are the persons who we know have come into contact with positive cases. There's a second cohort of that contact tracing and testing, which is made up of persons who came into the Ghanaian jurisdiction within a particular window. These are the persons that primarily we seek to trace and test. And already the engagements have started on how they can make themselves available for the testing while they are being traced. Teams have been trained across the country uh, who are doing that because not all of them are in Greater Accra and Greater um, Kumasi as well. Then two, and please let's take this clearly. Two, in the hotspot areas, in the hotspot areas, there are some neighborhoods in which the Ghana Health Service and the surveillance team desires to do some more active surveillance. What that means is that visit homes, have conversations with people, have people develop temperatures here. Are there persons here who believe they have symptoms and therefore want to test? Because while you are generally saying you are tracing and you are testing and saying that if persons have conditions, they should call 112, there may be somebody in a particular neighborhood who has not even paid attention or has not heard. So that enhanced program allows them to go out into these neighborhoods in the hotspot areas and engage the community. And if there are persons who are what they describe as the at-risk population, then they can test such persons. So in ramping up the testing, it's not a compulsory test of everybody in the um, um, neighborhood or in these districts, because even logistically, we can't do that. And we can't force people uh, to test by compulsory testing. We can't do that. But we are pleased at the general compliance and support that we are getting, and we intend to use that for the second layer, that when they get into the hot spots, they will engage people in the general neighborhood and examine how these persons, if especially they are showing symptoms, etc., can also be tested. I think it's important that we have this clarity so that we don't cause more panic out there that there are people coming to do compulsory testing of um, everybody. It's important to get that clarification out there. So the enhanced testing has two cohorts. A, those who are in the contact tracing and testing bracket, that is those who uh, had contact with positive cases, and as a next layer, those who returned into the Ghanaian jurisdiction uh, within that particular period of, I think, from the 15th coming forward, from the 15th um, coming forward to about the 28th when we uh, started the mandatory quarantine process. And then the second part is that in the hotspot zones, the neighborhoods will have some more active surveillance during which period uh, they'll have to test. Dr. Um, um, I hope I got it right, Do uh, Dr. Abadji? Okay, so thank you. Now. A quick general update on case count and case management. The um, man who is superintending the entire exercise, the Honorable Minister responsible for health, the Honorable Kukwaji Mamenu, will join us with that quick um, update. Honorable, let me let them sanitize the podium before.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honorable ministers. I'll call all of you health workers as colleagues, the security people. We are all colleagues together now fighting coronavirus disease 19. Let me do the case management first, because these are more intriguing figures that Kenyans, I believe, want to know. We now have people in isolation and for treatment. For Ga East, a whole hospital that has been dedicated for this exercise. We have 50, five zero cases on admission at Ga East. As of yesterday, new admissions that were put there were five and we discharged seven from Ga East yesterday. So total number of discharges now stand at 38, 38 discharges. These discharges are on home care. They have had first repeat tests, now waiting results. They are not ill. We've tested them negative. We've taken samples to do the second test, and we are waiting results. We've checked their homes. They can continue to observe self-quarantine as we continue to observe them. So they have been discharged to go home. We'll continue discussing and engaging them. The 79 we picked from the quarantined travelers. We have virtually transferred all those that were positive, with the exception of one person at Accra City Hotel. He was supposed to be transferred yesterday for triaging, and it's very likely that person may also be discharged even after we take him to guys for triage. That means that all those that are quarantined, we've taken away the 79, so those who continue to be in the hotel are all negative. I have written letters to be sent to them on an individual basis. The letters were personalized from the minister to each single one of them. We have thanked them for their cooperation and understanding. And we have announced to them, and I want to go and announce that they are all negative. But by quarantine protocols, we have earlier informed them that they will stay the whole 14 days. And since the 14 days is getting closer, some have been there 10, 11 days, we will start taking samples for repeat tests on them today. We expect that between now and Thursday, we'll have had their samples taken, tests done, results released, or early morning, 50 will be released.
And that's the Minister for Education there leading a pack of uh, experts. Uh, Minister for Health, sorry about that, but, but Minister for Information, Kojo Pankroma earlier, mm -hmm. leading a pack. Uh, so we just had the Minister for Health there, Kukwaj who is mm -hmm. also the MP for Doma Central. Mm -hmm. And uh, earlier you had seen Brigadier Sia and then uh, Cynthia Morrison, who is yeah. Minister for Gender, Children wow. and Social Protection. A few, mm -hmm. a few questions, though, that mm -hmm. are not too clear. And we'll mm -hmm. go back yeah. shortly when we have a clean feed, but which are not too clear for me. Um, I, I'm looking for the locations, exact locations, where, where these Kayaye, and is it just the Kayaye? Mm -hmm. You know, because the vulnerable. In, well, in the, the vulnerable, but you see that the emphasis consistently has, has been, been on the Kaye that Kaya. we have picked them up, we have tested their temperature, we have mm -hmm. confirmed. Mm -hmm. You know, what about the shoemakers? What about those who are sleeping under the the bridges, for mm -hmm. example, the track yeah. pushers and all of that? We need to have a holistic plan to cover all, all of them, them. Yeah. and know where we are keeping them. Well, what she know. said was mm -hmm. that um, for a certain number of those people, about twenty of them. Um, are being kept mm. but they don't have enough facilities to house all of them and mm. so for the rest okay. they'll keep feeding them well, she, she, she mentioned the that there were 15,000 well. kaya yeah mm. and we're cooking for them giving them stipends we don't know how much stipends we're giving them on a daily well, basis and whether or not if we give them the money mm -hmm. uh, they will find anything to buy given the fact that Brigadier General Sia said that we're going to see less vehicles less and less human beings in yeah. the coming days mm. so we need to think through this again right. I mean for, but for me I think this is a good step it is right. it's a good step mm -hmm. only that i don't want the emphasis to to be, be on, on just the kaya mm -hmm. we must mm -hmm. spread our tentacles music. because there are people who are not kaya or kaya mm -hmm. who are maybe itinerant rubbish collectors mm -hmm. who are maybe shoe shine mm -hmm. who, mm -hmm. the track pushes yeah. and all of that my, my concern mm -hmm. is with the children as mm -hmm. well because mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. we have more children on the streets who yeah. are begging mm -hmm. Um, what happens to them as well? Yeah. Because there was no mention of, of, of that. Yeah, what, those, what, those children. I have a concern with um, Kujo Ponkoma with the mass testing. I think he's categorized them. He says you're looking at hot spots areas. Yeah. We are looking at at risk population, yeah. and then people the contact the tracing. Ease, yeah. Now I have a problem with the at risk population. Yesterday, why, why do you? Daily Mail reported that in the UK uh, they recorded some uh, new 390. Uh, deaths mm -hmm. and one of them was a 19 year old yeah. you know who had no underlining you know condition okay. mm -hmm. and so and I think I also think that uh, there was this journalist in Zimbabwe young yeah, journalist yeah, who, who died. also oh, died yeah. but so he had underlying say, conditions well, yeah. well, they I said he wasn't okay. well yeah. Yeah. so, so had so, so I feel that um, with the at-risk population, maybe it's time we review that a bit, you know, because there are people who are younger, okay. who are recording mm. the cases. There are people who are even older. Yesterday, mm. I was telling Bella, there was an old man, 109 okay. years, who has yeah. recovered uh, covid who has recovered from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. He survived uh, World War One, World War Two. Even, even the Spanish yeah. flu, he survived. So I think we should review the, the, the at-risk the, the, population. The basic thing is that, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at our population from uh, census from 2010, mm -hmm. we have just about 5% mm -hmm. of, you know, our population who are in that older bracket. Right. Now, the bottom line is that you will uh, recover or survive on your immune system. Mm -hmm. So your focus at this point will be to strengthen your immune system or boost mm -hmm. your immune system. Yes. Wash your hands with soap and water and mm -hmm. keep healthy. Mm -hmm. Now, the cases of younger people who have died from COVID-19, from COVID from COVID mm -hmm. we do not know the full details of how of they that. died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you go in, you, might, you may, for example, get that they may have come into contact with somebody, with they didn't self-isolate, they didn't perhaps take their health serious. Mm -hmm. It could be any and anything. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But at this point, those who stand at a greater risk, those who are about 50, 60 going up, they are at a greater risk. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way to protect them. Mm -hmm. And it, it will interest you to know that there are a lot of older folks who don't have the wherewithal, who don't live with their families. For example, those who are caught in witches camp. Yeah. What do they what eat do they, mm -hmm. yeah. to strengthen mm -hmm. their immune the system? Immune system. Mm -hmm. So already mm -hmm. they are low, low, low way down there. Mm -hmm. There are also young people, I agree, who may not have what it takes. So they may not be eating right mm -hmm. to boost their immune, their immune system. system. Mm -hmm. So the basic thing, we're all being told to eat fruits and vegetables. If they can't find the fruits and vegetables, can we have the vitamin C, the lickable ones at least for them to, mm -hmm. to, to have around mm -hmm. for them? For them. Yeah. But let's go back to the information ministry because the link is back. And information minister, Kujo Ponkroma, is on the uh, podium. Try to see if this report can be taken back to their countries. They are all foreigners. But that process diplomatically has not been completed. And they are under order from the president 
to let them get back to their country. They entered our country illegally when borders had been closed. And so if you are found, definitely you have broken the laws and you have to be taken back to your country. UGMC, University of Ghana Medical Center, that is ready for use. Training has been completed. There are 14 beds for holding area and 14 beds for treatment. Five ICU beds are also ready. So we have UGMC dedicated again some part of the facility to put in patients. Bank of Ghana Hospital. I kept on telling the community, the people in Ghana that the Minister of Health hasn't got direct jurisdiction over Bank of Ghana Hospital. And people were blasting that there are hospitals completed that will not be utilized and all that. We have had engagement with Bank of Ghana and they have released two floors that will take care of 20 beds for our use. Because the facility doesn't belong to the Minister of Health, Bank of Ghana has agreed that their own people and some VIP personnel will be allowed there. So in case we get some of you here, I VIP people, we are likely to take you to Bank of Ghana Hospital. Why are you laughing? You are all VIP people. In this material, Obiyanyo <laughs> Biao. Okay. So I'll underscore the fact that we are ready to take people in and uh, make sure they are getting well. Was this infection to be done before we hand over the facility to the owners? Um, let me now move away from case management to look at why we have been asked to stay home. So the surveillance report for this morning. We have recorded 195 cases with five days. The number of regions reporting cases remain five. Greater Accra, Ashanti, Northern, and Upper West. The Greater Accra region has the most cases, 174, followed by the Northern region, 10. Ashanti region has nine. Upper West region, one and Eastern Region 1. Most reported cases now are from routine enhanced surveillance activities. Cases from travelers under mandatory quarantine remain 89. That means that we have taken all their samples we have done. We have got the, those positive and those negative are still in hotels observing the mandatory 14 day quarantine pre period. Cases from travelers under mandatory quarantine remain 89. That is Tamale 10, Accra 79. Whereas cases from routine surveillance currently stands at 106, Accra 95, Kumasi 8, Obwasi 2. As at 08 hours this morning, I'll summarize it in a table of form. General surveillance 106, travelers undergoing mandatory quarantine, 79 positive, in Accra and in Tamale, 10. So the total figures recovered and discharged, 38. Discharged home management, 49. Those in treatment facilities, 138. Dead, 5. 
So we have total reported cases, 195. Let me go over again because it's very important. The type of explanation my colleague and younger brother, Koyo, tried to explain. I will stress, there is no policy as yet for compulsory mass testing that people are just parading and trading in on social media. If anybody amongst those managing COVID-19 team had gone on air anywhere or even on social media and had said that we are doing mass testing in some communities, please, this should be corrected now. It is correct that we have teams that are working now in Accra and in Kumasi for what we call contact tracing. It's like those who have been tested positive. They had contacts with people. Those who traveled in country before the quarantine are already in the communities. We have got a tall list of them with their contacts, telephone numbers. And from the database that we have, almost all of them are in Accra and Kumasi with isolated cases across the country. These are the people we are trying to reach. And when we get to them, each of them, we will try to take samples from that person and transport for tests. But if we meet one of such people and he's living with a wife and children, maybe in a very good um, self-contained two-bedroom or three-bedroom house, they are also contacts. So there's a need to try to test the very immediate contacts that he has come in with. If he's living in a compound house, the tracers will ask them questions. So those in the compound house who have had contact with that person definitely have contact and they will also be tested. That does not mean that if you come and you are living in NT49 and all the people in NT49, about five, your family people, have been tested, and that person and none of them had gone to NT48, we are not going to test anybody in NT48. That is the explanation. So the contacts will continue from contact to contact. But if you have not had any contact and they don't have evidence to suspect you, there will not be any sample taken from you. And that is not mass testing or compulsory testing. So we are only checking on contacts. So far, we have deployed several teams in Accra and Kumasi. They are working now. And people that are being contacted are cooperating very, very, very well. And we believe if we are able to do this exercise successfully, the chain that we want to break will get broken and we'll have no challenges in our country. That is the exercise we have mounted. The necessary materials and logistics that these teams need have been given. They are going around with security officials and immigration people and um, disease control officers in the districts, epidemiologists, the field officers. They are all part of the teams that are moving. And we believe that with your cooperation, things will be okay for us. We will continue to give updates on the type of numbers they are reaching up to. In Accra, we now have 140 teams in the areas that we have debarkated to actually trace people in. So far, between Monday and Tuesday, they had contacted 635 people and 589 samples have been taken. They have all been sent to Noguchi. We have also started testing in Kolebu, the Infectious Disease Reference Laboratory. 
so the tests will now become a bit larger and results will come a bit earlier. In Kumasi, we have deployed 40 teams. They started a bit late yesterday, but they have contacted 160 people and they have collected 22 samples. We are pushing them to up their game today so that they can get closer to the targets we have set for them. Things are working for us. The good news is that some people are being contacted on telephone to try to find their locations, and they are also cooperating. Yesterday, somebody called me and praised government on the efforts that we have put in so far. The person came in earlier, before quarantine. He had been called on telephone, contacted, they've given her where she should go for her sample to be taken. She went there, they took her sample, and she was so happy awaiting the test results. Not just one isolated case. So the contacts can be physical, one-on-one, -on -one, can be on telephone, but we request that Ghanaians should cooperate with us, and we believe we can break the chain and succeed in the efforts that we are making. The president is so solidly behind us. He's in almost every meeting the team attends. He's chairing the interministerial uh, uh, meeting committee that he has set up. And the old man is not sleeping. Thank you very much. Minister, thank you for that quick update. Colleagues, um, I'll just ask you to pay attention to the further nuanced uh, data that we have provided. I mentioned that we'll explain why we are um, nuancing the data some more. Uh, because sometimes if you just take the ballpark figure 195 and you don't understand the categories, people actually even end up getting scared. And that's why uh, as we go on, we try to nuance the data some more so that uh, it creates context for us. So Ghana's case count as of this morning, as the Honorable Minister mentioned, is 195. But it's in different categories. The general surveillance proper in the population is 106. That is the general surveillance in the population uh, as has been captured so far. Out of those 106, three have been discharged because they have recovered. What that means is that the tests have taken place and they have tested after treatment or after supportive treatment. So they are discharged and recovered. There's another category of discharged for home management. What, like the Honorable Minister mentioned, it means that they are no longer showing any uh, visible symptoms. They don't appear sick or ill. They are uh, going through the final bits of their treatment so that they can test negative finally. So you'll find that that's about 18. Then those who are in facilities but are responsible to, are hoping will be moved either home or uh, 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 discharged, recovered finally, that's 80. Unfortunately, we have lost five persons, and I think the context of how we lost them has already been provided. That's what gives us the 106. Now, in Accra, a new quarantine was introduced. Um, a total of 79 persons tested positive. None of them at this stage has been discharged on basis of recovery. But 31 of them have been moved home for treatment because the, um, the risk profiling shows that the people who can be treated at home. 48 of them are being treated, nine persons tested positive. None of them at this stage has been discharged on basis of recovery. But 31 of them have now been moved home for treatment because the, um, the risk profiling shows there are people who can be treated at home. 48 of them are being treated in facilities, but they are responding very well to treatment. None of them is critical, none of them is dead. That's how we arrive at the 79. In Tamale, the 10 persons who were uh, put in quarantine tested, uh, none of them has been uh, discharged on basis of recovery, none of them has been discharged for home management. Uh, but as of now, while we are waiting to complete the diplomatic um, protocol so that we can have them go back to their countries of origin to continue their treatment. They are currently responding to uh, the levels of treatment that the doctors there are paying attention to. And I'll give some quick uh, clarification on that because the brief we have is that um, at the time they came into the jurisdiction, the borders hadn't been closed. 
And that is how come they were put in quarantine for, I think, 11 days prior to when their um, test and results came in. So, Honorable Minister is qualified accordingly. And then um, you come to the hotel. So, that means three persons totally have been discharged because they have recovered. 49 persons have been discharged for home uh, treatment for the final bits of their treatment. 138 are in facilities uh, but are responding to treatment. We are very hopeful and optimistic uh, about that. Uh, unfortunately, five persons, but that's how come we arrive at the 195. We have done this in response to public inquiries about why we should further nuance the data so that uh, context is created. So, Honorable Minister, we are very, very grateful uh, uh, to you. We are also grateful for the policy clarifications. We are not doing compulsory testing or mass testing. It's an enhanced testing in some um, uh, uh, categories, and he has explained that. We want to thank the local teams that are assisting us in this exercise. As much as possible, we want to ask that you clear all local communication you are given with the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service so that in terms of um, information and public expectation management, um, we do not get it wrong. Now, for persons who came into the Ghana jurisdiction from the 15th prior to the 28th, uh, who now understand that they will for, form part of this. You are encouraged to call 112, 112 and inform them as such if you haven't been reached so that they can also schedule an appointment for you to be there. Now, the enhanced testing has commenced. A few days ago, we mentioned that we as part of this exercise will be asking officials involved in frontline activities such as government officials to take tests too as part of the enhanced testing. We have started with the president and frontline officials who are involved in this fight. And I'll crave your indulgence to please pay attention to this. I want to invite um, the physician, who, the president of the Republic, Dr. Petrina Tichi Ankara, to handle this brief. This one is above my pay grade. Doc, one moment while they sanitize the that all the tests came back negative. A day after his birthday, we continued to test people in the secretariat, including myself, because we tend to deal with him on, one, on a one-to-one -one basis. And as I speak now, a total of 99 people have been tested, and the results have come back negative. We continue the, we are continuing this process, and in, as and when there is, we hope that everybody will test negative. Um, The, I know the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service are continuing the process. The President is, as much as he said, very hard working, standing, being in, chairing a lot of meetings, staying up late. So we sort of, we, I am on him to make sure that he's observing the social distancing. If any of you observe that he's not wearing the mask, which a lot of questions have been asked, is he's observing the social distancing strictly, and then he's, we're making sure that he's washing his hands very often, frequently, and then he is also using his sanitizers as well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the Minister of Health says he's also done the test and he is negative. Minister, I want them to test you again. Uh, Dr. Tetiankra, thank you for that update. So we have uh, commenced the testing of frontline officers who are involved in this exercise. We started um, with the president, and many of us are also submitting um, uh, samples as well. The minister responsible for health has tested. He is um, negative uh, as well. Um, we want to encourage people to understand that it is not a very scary thing. Um, taking the test enables us to know your status and therefore assist you if you need to be assisted. May I quickly do a translation of some of that highlight into three and then we'll deal with the final matter which is the uh, information contact center and then we'll take your questions. Um, Minister responsible for social protection, energy Bebia or Mobedano, Ministry, no, Enya Quenya, and Antinanti, Mahe Bebia, Dudu, and Beda, Bimu did that. If ye bimu any 
baby a hodo o mako hu aku hu kwan o betumi ahwe o mso ho wono ma ne de da kwan ho no so no wo mo ne minister of education ne aban nyuma ko aka no so e hwehwe baby a ye betumi e de wo mo akwako da em o medua ne sem mu wo mo ne agencies ni bi ne ankran kran nyuma ni bi so e bo mo mo den se ye behwe na sabri impo no ye tumi ama o medua ne ansana a juma kakra mo be ye akohomase ka kakra mo betumi aye de ahwe o mo matumi ahwe de aboa o ebio akande ebi ho o mo hia se na ye nyina ye ka se yinzu sanitizer semina ensuo ni ade na nyi o mo nyina na ewo bi ebi mu ye ye nua no mo ma bi mu hwe ni mfie so atu mo se nko ye wo ba ba nka ye ye em wadu ni mpeni mfie so a ni aye ye disiesie ye ho bo ye disiesie ye ho bo so me bo so me ni ade o mo so be hia bi sabre ya shops ni ade ya totu mo no enti gender ministry no e hwe ma ya ye ni na o ma mpeni a shop mo se uh, answer na na what you will say and call the way no mum fa update emreno on and yet your macas on bayou the omer to me a young casa the honorable minister and national security minister every eddie hujuma minister responsible for health so ebe kind one so actually much and say a dick kind uh sound come on say yes you have a test to be a it was some areas i am put crap that be a bab on team from the local level say you have a test to be a no it was actually look at crying yes sanity yes it test now you need pgm Pijana ye pejemono, e gwa hudo mienu, bako ye wano ma ye nimsa, omoni obia, wenye bi, enye nkita hudia ono, na wase ye test na. Naso obia, utu kwa ye eba gana, emse fiti beye 15th no. If ya siye fi third, ye eliminative flight, no beye 15th, hono, ena fi ye ere. Safo ono ye ni mo ma, ye efro ome di ome, chiso omo mrambe teste. Se mpo uka omo ye tu kwa ye ba, ye no hona se, ye mfre wa, utu mi fre wa, wan tu. Na omo ma so te so kan obi na omo e kire okwa abetu mi afa so na ye tumi atesto ansa na so omo ba ba bia ye nyi obi a onya ayare ni bia ya san so wadi nkomo o ho ahwe e wo mpotem ho se oni nkofo obi enyankita hodi a e bi ono de onti se dogo bi nu abekra but oni ne nyankita hodi ni e ho kwan abetu mi afa so na nkon no so ya test no so obi se wo ho e bia ne ho dodo na na bi bia sa bre su ye test na e ye no na ye kan wasem ne nka se by force ye ba be test test obi a wo sample tem te ye shemo se mo ma obi a em enti ase man ye nua no so e bo ayo form na ye shemo se abrebia mo the information e call ta mo ni Ghana health service any minister of health eni hu komo no mo claim ma mo na confusion bia amamu e wo e ho and sana ye ka as part of testing ye fi ase e test even a buying pen in fo a e bo a okun we say minister odi enim uh, Dr. Abuaji, Dr. Bedusa, called the air, see, do back me, I'm a genahe, or my penny, I bet you a champagne in four, I do who do many. I fear, I so test it. A warm son say, Yes, only an uncle for a cobber. Or my penny doctor, and a big nice doctor Petrina, and or chairs, or my penny, and Cassani, a nipper, a duocono, what tree. I wore a nursery, or ninety-eight persons, and son of my penny, and Cassa can wear ninety-nine. Or my test, I only na a year negative. Ye cost we are a test, no. Um, na ye me kisho se se impo ye mu ye ye impo ye mu ne bi umwa ye tu mi huna ya buano. Colleagues, one last thing. Um, seni ya chere chere muno nipa oha eni edio kuno enu ena sabri ye huna se oma testi positive. Mi ensa de omwa tom ema ya mu mukufi edio nine enkuno forty nine ya mu mukufi ya ye shom suufi. Ya chile musa, ema ubi ati ase, ya mkufi ya yeshwa msu ufie. Ka krebi na omu hato omu kwa. Nti omu diya, ya mkufi ya yeshwa msu e ufie. Oha, eni edu ya sang wa 3138. Omu wo, facilities mu bi ya hospital ni adia yeshwa omu. Ha, omu su, doktor fo one ni aje senia, omu, nshe ya no, e kone nimi. Ya bo mpa e se, enche bi omu su, ebi tu meyi oma kufi, mpu se kwa kwa omu hato omu. Inum ena sabri yashere ya bomba ya se ibi emba emba kaho ya stressa man peni si ubi anti ne fi sana wachi mienu we wuti ne fi ya enkebe bwa asoja phone swa chere yense omsu pija omni emani mu enya di omu be be bubu ubi ya by heart by heart e wukum onipa omu edi tu mse ordi ne saka ubi anki ni se ordi ne saka nono omu yi ne fi operation numa omu e ya hundi hundi muna di ebisi bia no omba ma ya swati I want to quickly go to the last matter for this morning's brief. To facilitate clarity in information flow to citizens on COVID-19 and related matters, the government of Ghana is this morning deploying a national information contact center. Now, colleagues, we have already announced the use of the national emergency contact number 112. 
So you call 112 if you feel like you're having symptoms and you need to be tested. You call 112 and will do well to uh, send somebody uh, to you or direct you to where you can go take a test. Um, we also ask those who are making prank calls on 112 to stop. We have started blocking people who are making those prank calls. We need to free those lines so that people who have genuine cases can get through. But in addition to 112, which is for those who have symptoms and need to be tested or those who fall within the categories of tests, um, we are this morning announcing the contact number 311. 311. 311 will offer the following services. One, it will provide information to the general public on COVID-19. So anybody who needs general information on COVID-19, you can call 311. Two, if you need real-time clarification on the imposition of restrictions, you can call 311. Three, we have sent out a lot of PPEs across the country. If you work in a health facility and you want to give us some feedback on the status of PPE in your health facility, you can give us a call on 311 and then we can feed back to those who are distributing. If it's locked up at the regional level or maybe it's at stores or whatever, then we have quick feedback and then we can attend to it. And four, during this period of restrictions, especially observations of the restrictions or the lack of observations that you want to draw attention to, you can call 311. Those lines are active as at now. It is my understanding also that a WhatsApp interface has also been made available. Uh, the number to that interface is 055 five uh, that is a national information contact center to provide you with information or to take feedback from you on the COVID-19 matters but if you need to get tested 112 is the number that you call quickly in three um yama number back 112 a doctor for near the Wahema, yet to me, a boy, a more test. Apart from Sa 112, yet the number back also a two abontian open, yet 311. 311 patch out in ye. So, up as all TB be a say about Yari, we are about to me for 311. Say, um, yes, you'll be anti nephew, be bitter, what you're not as all tears out to me for 311. So, we are Juma Medical Facility, be Sabre, I had PPs, be Bri, Abbey. Ah, yache, a woman, or better say, yes, you'll be sure how near be an answer, and need the answer to an answer day. Yes, let's say, Uber to me, my feedback. Nay, dear ma, one of my air check materials, no, no man who say be a whole problem or her answer problem, you want to feedback on PPs and a suit me my assorty. And son, I say, be because we won't pursue us, sabri, ya, yes, you'll be antenna for your per se, ya, so tea, and a suit me for three one one. The best, let's say, one of my phone lines need the agron, Nina, Munya, yes, I be fierce, ya, block it. If I fear say cry here block you all. The Indian lines no matter how much he has power was in be cannot make me my aswati. Colleague, that brings us to the end of our brief. We'll take questions now in various languages. Um, the various directors are here to uh, help us. May I ask them to set up the microphone um, so that we can take the questions? Please do well not to touch the microphone um, so that we can take your questions. Yes, Chief. Please step forward. And then I know there are questions on the um, press pool platform. We'll take them at some point. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Press. The Honorable Health Minister mentioned that there are 10 persons in the Health Minister 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 and also yesterday we heard a number of trotter drivers had been arrested for plying the roads. Uh, we'd like to get some explanation as to why, because we heard uh, Brigadier General mention that they are you know, intensifying their clampdown. So if it's the plan, what is the plan in place for those who have to do something in town and will need commercial transport? Thank These you. are trotter drivers who were arrested for or, or vehicles that were stopped for not observing the social distancing, correct? Well, I don't know the reasons because there were various reasons assigned for the arrest, and so... Okay, I I'll let him respond to it later. Brigadier General, please be on standby to respond to that one for us. Yes, sir. Um, I'm Bernard Atwater from UTV. I'm Bernard Atwater from UTV. Um, I'm Bernard Atwater from UTV. 
um, areas now she will be sitting data no yes am say o my that of disability was a 10435 i perceive him in your mom she say yeah opese o the two akwem e the mom say after nya you go through you know on bit me adio mo no my age you know ya ya ho be son ya pankro ya wo atade no say bit me dia show mo just like okay say omo willingly and i won fear so no no, 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 and see, to say, oh, my fee, um, baby, a bank crying, or did that one when I saw Mpeso Mokwa, Yamo Mancono, um, and Common Senate, Senate Bema, I was your phone so pair, or Medina, or to me, I was your phone so come at two. Okay. And almost so come at two. Okay. Okay. Matias, Mpeso Molly, Matias. Chief, let's take your final one and then we'll take first round of response. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Selom Aminia with TV3. Um, we want to find out how many tests we've been able to do so far, the total tests that we've been able to do so far. And also, we've had figures being bundled about that we have only uh, 80 ventilators, some say 100. Can we have clarity to the number of ventilators we have? And then the status of the 50,000 uh, PPEs that uh, uh, the president ordered for. And and also to 50,000 test kits, test kits, not yes. PPEs. Yes, test kits. Okay, 50,000 test kits. Test kits, yes. Yeah. And then to the gender minister, we want to find out uh, how much the, sti the stipend is and then what are they going to use it for? Because if they are being camped and they have everything available, uh, why that? We also paid information that some uh, districts are going to do a total lockdown. That's I also, and then we jack by way. I don't know if. We can have clarity on that. Thank no, you. no. I mean, as for that one, I can tell you for a fact that one is not true. Okay, so it is not true that some districts are going to do a total um, lockdown. It is not true. I think the communication, as we've mentioned, um, those are the local level who are uh, giving uh, information. We pray them to liaise it um, with, with with the policymakers at the top, so that we don't speak across purposes. What is happening is enhanced testing in these areas, and we've been at pains this morning to explain. Minister of Health, I will invite you to speak to the 50,000 test kits where we are. Uh, Dr. Abouadji, I will invite you to speak to how many ventilators do we have within the Ghanaian jurisdiction? And maybe you want to nuance it between in the public sector and the estimate also in the private sector so that we have uh, clarity. Uh, how many tests so far? Dr. Bedusa Akodia, please be on standby to answer that uh, for me. Gender Minister, if you join me, how many Kayaes or homeless people are you looking at in general? Um, what about those who are apprehensive and want to go home? I think those questions are in three. Omar, one person, a coffee, and then you be catch on a bush and force was a bri, um, or my to or baby, or more than I be catch on. And Sana, um, who are Kandia, near my house after we open soil, who are Kandia, or Pese, Udiana, Finance Minister, Mouse Casafayana, Pachobra. I say, um, question I'll be said there. Eh, on one hour, stranded, or better than when you want our Fakasa. Minister of Communication ended up my 15 phones. Our uh, credit to order that all in seen so when you want my menu, my casa won't you a cow in seen then will be our assets go on your neighbors and for the casa won't you and will be an alcohol to any him in ten year caddy about your bed educating one who send the Henry and Norman Bibre won't ask you when you more about. What's more, be and cook room. I will follow Swan Shadanta since America San Mikade, a Bemo on education. Nimpa, Henry and Umkayo, whom we are looking at 15,000, Mekan, Ebi and Auntie, 15,000, and men break down the air, younger ones home. Na a bis a day on our own, a binwaha, young markets want to market in Webway. 
Inti no buo ho a be pede nan kasa ene nan sa e ko krom. E bin wo kita mwon pan wos wo ko go meke di gwa na waba nuye di ban. Inti you realize that on a book of job on chrome be some desk and oil and man can because yeah data no catch and yeah we are yeah but ma obi a who i am pa say a data and also is kasama and shen yeah and if why you're over bloated it's in your tread cautiously no one yet a yeah mo biska yeah mo be the vanity yes your situation may sort it all said and done yeah but son of a happy only about my own briefing now how it went which is in the mass of questions and the in a way must I be a question? Are you okay with the answers? You're okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Honorable Minister, yeah, there was um, one year at my hand. Um, Honorable Minister, please join me. 50,000 test kits, where are we now? Um, one person was reported to have escaped. Do we have him back? Thank you, Koyo. 50,000 test kits was what the president ordered us to bring in. As I speak, we have received a little over half of the quantities. We have placed orders for all of them, and we are still awaiting delivery. We believe we will not find uh, short of test kits in course of the period. We have adequate now to test all those samples that we take. We are taking deliveries from time to time in short intervals. And we believe by close to the week or early next week, we might have received all the 50,000 test kits. Um, could you let me try the ventilators? At the beginning, we had, we did an assessment. And between Ghana Health Service and the teaching hospitals and some private facilities, we had about 48 already in our hospitals. Then we ordered for, sorry, 67. Then we ordered for 50. Out of the 50, I received 20. And the rest are waiting airlift to come into a country very, very soon. So 67 plus 20 gives us plus private sector altogether about 200 at the moment. So we have ventilators. But the good news is that none of the patients we have has been put on ventilator yet. So we are okay with the stocks that we have. SKP. The Tamil SKP, we are still searching for that patient. We haven't found him, but we haven't taken him off the number of 10. So we are very uh, optimistic that we can track that person and bring him back for treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister. So just to go over, the count shows that we have 67 ventilators in the public sector and an extra order has been made for 50 which will move us to about 117 in the public sector alone but 20 have arrived now so it's 67 plus 20 that puts us as 87 now in the public sector but when you add what is in the private sector in private facilities that brings us to about 200 ventilators currently so assuming we had critical cases that needed ventilators would have about uh, 200 currently um, to deal with, even while we wait for the other about 30 or so to come in. Honorable Minister, thank you for that quick um, update. So how many tests have been conducted so far, out of which we have about 195? I think that is the final outstanding question. Um, and then I'll come to Brigadier General on the um, arrested torturers. Um, Dr. Medusa, I you want to tell how many tests so far? Do you have a date? Uh, um, uh, I forgot to give us total number of tests. If you don't have it, we can wait for you to check. Okay. So please check and then we can answer that question. It's better to get it right than to. So we would, we, would, we would hold on to that question and hopefully we would provide an answer to it when he checks how many tests they've done so far in all, out of which um, one and five. Brigadier General, please join us. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, with regard to the arrest, the supposedly arrest of a trotro or trotro drivers, so far as I'm concerned, that is not true. No trotro driver has been arrested. 
it is not true. What I know is this. The directive for the restrict restriction of movement has given exception to a certain category of persons who can move freely because of the critical functions that they perform. Those persons are moving freely. In addition to that, individuals who have need for specific reasons to go out are allowed to go out. And as a result of this, trotters are supposed to be moving on the road, but with some spacing guidelines. Therefore, if you put the two together, it means that when the trotter is moving, the trotter must be carrying somebody who is either within the exam category or somebody who has critical need to move. So if the trotter gets to the checkpoint and we realize none of those persons fall in this category, we turn them out. We don't arrest. And we are going to do that very effectively. If a trotter is moving on the road and is not carrying any person who is mandated by the law to move on the road, we shall turn him out. That's one I will insist it. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Brigadier General, for um, that response. Um, Dr. Odisa Kodea, you have the numbers now. Please, please come up. And then those who have a final batch of questions. Um, yes, sir. Are you a sign language interpreter? You have a question yourself. <laughs> Will you ask a question in sign language or you would? <laughs> Please come. Uh, Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, just two at a time, please, so that we can also observe the session. Total number of tests done so far. For now, the two major laboratories that are conducting the tests for us are the Gucci Memorial Institute Medical Research, and they have conducted 4,225 tests since the beginning of this exercise from January. 4,225. Four, two, Noguchi takes care of the southern sector. And then Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, KCCR, is taking care of the middle and then the northern part. They have conducted 335 tests. In total, 4,560 tests have been conducted in the country. Thank you so much. And out of this, the output was what was earlier mentioned. Thank you very much. 4,560 tests conducted so far, 4,560. Yes, sir. We're almost coming to the end, so let's be snappy here. Is a microphone on? Yeah. A friend Africa. Mean some a a my my now, sir, did turn in why I didn't turn my abasa. I feel before and son and carbino, a bay, son, she said, move BMP. I think, sir, and car, or more ashes, uncle, and in us, uncle, fooling in us, or more factor or more, or a banish him. Now, I didn't turn up, I feel now, or more air science, she said, or there to a moon. I feel, eh, questions, eh, master, my tossing, you know, a year, trot, trono, and say, what I allulo, and now my troop us, and so a woke room. I didn't see a man, I'm a quama, I a lulu, I'm far, I need you, and I said, I'm a two so I need you, because I name it free fear by saying, many nurses being a four car, a fat trot triaba, a drew baby no, or move my AC, say, can't into me in Cossacker, and it is a AC, a coffee baby for four. The items in car, or my lulu, and name my two masons, so you are and can no more submit me a boy, I'm a nurses, name other police for almost so any or more private cars are, you quit you Okay, so we and also no. I didn't think that's how she No man, I'm fine to me that's it. Okay, the second one, no. You be taking a suggestion. We say I'm for Ayalolo ne Metro Mars, but I'm informed that Ayalolo is working. There be a route now we won't answer no. And then a big edge man, so I'm informed that Ayalolo is working. But first one, open numbers. Ninche move from Honourable Minister for uh, Social Protection. Patch your answer, yes sir. Yeah, my name is Clement Sam, and I'm asking a question on behalf of the deaf community. 
The first one is um, the number that we're supposed to call, 112. The deaf people are asking that, how can they also assess it, since they cannot call and talk on it? So is there going to be a text line for them where they can also you know, text and get the right information at appropriate time? And the second one is they realize that um, there are videos educating us on how to use the sanitizers, how to wash our hands regularly, but they've not seen anything in the form of sign language getting that information directly to them. And the third question has to do with the Minister for Gender that has been done for the PWDs. And the executive, one of them, sent a text message asking, how about the deaf people? How is that arrangement going to benefit the deaf community? Do they fit within the exactly. PWD category? Yeah, that, Minister, that's I think right. the, uh, uh, those with hearing impairments fit into the PWD category. So yes, it fits into the category and they will right. find out. But then your question about um, communication to persons with hearing impairments. I know Honorable Pius has been working on that. Honorable Pius, please uh, join me so that you can provide a response to that when we are done. Yes, sir. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, if I'm your Asante, maybe more, I don't TV. Honorable, uh, question I'm present with you, uh, health workers, nurses, and the doctors are of the baby, 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 the the facility of the baby, 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 Nintia wo kota na se wanya e de good reason na se ye si fu mo eh e kwam ben so wo de se sani pay e be sa san wo chi akofi um health workers no ya ma um exemption um so we expect say omodi exemption no e na e be kwa kodu be bia omo e ye djuma and then on the second matter answer na wo be fifi no we say eh the who hear the approval case, you know, will be here on Sabeka. Yes, I answer. I'm going to see what went in fear. A very inconvenience. At the amount, and only I'm saying standard a year. Yeah, the amount. Honorable Powers will answer the question about sign language, and then there's a suggestion that we include a text line uh, for those who want to call it. So I'll come to you shortly. Um, could you? You are the last one. Are there any others? Madam, please come. So after this final two, then I'll take the platform and then we'll wrap up. Yes, sir. Um, my first question has been asked in Chi, so I'll plead with you to answer it in English. Um, Which question is that? General transport arrangement for health workers. Like we have said, health okay. workers have been given an exemption, and we look forward to them using that exemption to get to work. And then three days ago, we heard that a, um, a doctor practicing at Lekma Hospital um, has been infected. What is his condition now? And secondly, you also made mention of Weja and Ayawa, so um, West testing. Can we know specific areas so that we follow and then monitor the, the testing exercise? And then something that has got to do with security. Um, members of the security service are stopping vehicles and then asking uh, people, including health service workers, to turn back home. I believe this is unfair. What are they doing? Because they promise that they will be very, very professional in times like this. Thank you. So there are reports that health care workers are being turned um, or are being asked to go back home. That would be very strange, especially when they have been given an exemption. We need them at the hospitals and health facilities to work for us. But Brigitte, I'll come to you for you to give a clarification on those uh, reports. Yes, madam, we'll take your final one. Okay. I want to find out if necessary private institutions being given any training on how to treat people who report at their facilities with symptoms. Okay. Thank you very much. Dr. Abwaji, can you quickly take that away for us? Nurses at private institutions, are you training them so that they can also know how to handle issues that may come up there? Very quickly. Nurses and doctors in private institutions, are they on board? Or, yeah, or you want people just to go or deal with the public institutions? Thank you very much. Um, as earlier presented, the ordinary minister has met all the private sector people. And they are part of the basket, especially the Accra and Kumas, where the majority are. Districts have had trainings for them, and so we expect that uh, they will be part of the team that would uh, provide care. But I also want to talk about the Lekman. Uh, Please go issue. ahead. Yes, uh, there's a protocol for when you test positive, you are isolated, and your contacts are also isolated. Currently, we are we have information that at least that doctor has been. Uh, isolated of say quarantine to not to spread and there are about 70 other staff who are also undergoing some isolation 
what we are looking for is that for those who may not, and that's what something we discussed, who may not be able to self-isolate, will be put in a hotel or something until the period is over. And so that uh, arrangement is in place to ensure that while that we will continue the, uh, the contact tracing, as part of the mass exercise, these are considered as all part of the hotspots. And they'll be roped in in the expanded uh, uh, contract tracing that we are doing. But we take notice of the fact that I think at the Confalonchi Teaching Hospital, uh, a number of persons in the facility who had been contact traced, how many were they? And then their test came out uh, negative or so? Tamale, yeah, rather. Tamale. Yes. Tamale. Yes. Yes. How many were there? About 41. They About 41 negative. of them. So we take notice of that one. Yes, yes. yes. But and they will be followed up subsequently to see. Uh, Very well. Within the, uh, within the 14 days, if mm -hmm. they do not have symptoms, they'll be, uh, other way they do, then they'll be tested. Okay. Thank you very much. It's important to also understand that the fact that you've been in contact with somebody doesn't mean you've necessarily got it. We have cases in which people have been in contact and like in the case of Tamale, they tested um, negative. So let's all keep our fingers crossed. And uh, Honorable Minister, also as part of the enhanced contact tracing, the regions outside the, the lockdown are doing enhanced tra uh, contact tracing. That's why they may see a little bit more expanded activity there, including people who may have moved in there because they are also people of interest. And so people should not probably harass them, but they are of interest and the regions have been asked to, as it were, uh, review their issues and see whether there are any issues to be done. So that will be an enhancer. So if even anybody hears that there are Eastern region, other regions, extended activities taking place, it's all part of the exercise we are doing now. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Um, Kujajiman, we would take a decision on whether or not we can give some further details on where exactly these enhanced tests are going on. We have the view at this stage that the general um, explanation should suffice so that we balance information flow with people's uh, privacy as well. But we would look at that and if we have to go a bit further, we will deal with that one. Honorable Pius, where are you? Ah, there you are. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, assets uh, are being produced, uh, and by assets I mean that uh, educational material uh, in the nature of uh, sign language are being produced for uh, showing on mass media. Uh, again, uh, there are discussions with the social welfare department uh, about community engagements with uh, these uh, persons with uh, impairments. Also take note, ladies and gentlemen, that at all uh, such COVID-19 media-related engagements and briefings, there is deliberate attempt to get some language interpretation uh, done. Uh, thank you very much, Honourable Minister. Thank you, Honourable Deputy Minister. Um, colleagues who will now be drawing down the curtain on our briefing um, this morning, barring a couple of answers. Yes, Honorable Minister, please join me. We also want to say thank you to GIFEC, to the NCA, to the Ministry of Communications, and to the telecom companies that have helped us to put up this uh, National Information Contact uh, Center. We want to say a very big thank you to them for this very quick job that they've managed to, to do to help us provide more information. Honorable Minister. Um, with persons with disability, this is a data from the Council. Ashanti region persons with disability, 7,526. In Greater Accra region, persons with disability, 2,000, 2, Now, let me give you the breakdown. We have the gender distribution, male and female. Types of disability, physical, visual, Psychosocial, hearing, speech, cerebral palsy, and epilepsy. So it's a breakdown, it's comprised of all of them. And then you ask whether the CAE, we have the data, but what is happening is that some of them have traveled back home before the ban. And so when we use the old data, we are going to inflate the figures. We want adequate data because it deals with money. That is why we are now com um, compiling data as to the people who are in Accra, as I speak to you, and who are in Kumasi. We have the total data of all of them, but we are working with those here because we are giving them food and we are giving them logistics. Who are we giving the logistics to? We have to give to those who are here and not those who are out. That is why we are. We told you about the 15,000. Not that we don't have the original data. Thank you. Oh, you can, can you say, 
Fancy. Missy, on one now. Yes, she won't see. See, I weigh 15,000. Yeah, what data? Car, you're a funny now. It's to be four a ban and a baba, and they've been on Kohon Chrome. Yeah, it's to me, Carol, when I walk on Chrome, yeah, a budget for them. Yeah, them, I want to own you. It's all confused on Kahon. Yes, she won't want to have lockdown affecting one. It's in a year, yeah, you call around a year, the date if you own a war. Many of us say, "Yeah, I will go shifu afram the way identify binom." Yeah, first, ni yaman e koma wonke ke ya kwa ye shongwa na wone ezamu because of accountability. Because ewa ye journalist ne chine beka chemde ni pane ezi wonyo kubu inumpu we ten thousand ne ya mo forty thousand. It's ye pedo wona na wohan ne ye shongwa because of sika ye spend ami ye tumi ye budgeting accountability. Ezamu onudasi. Honourable Minister, Yedawase. colleagues, we're going to wrap up our brief this morning. Um, two final points. APSA Ghana, formerly Barclays Bank. Um, having taken notice of uh, this national battle that we are on, and also having taken notice of uh, the President's establishment of a COVID-19 relief fund, uh, would like to make a very significant contribution this morning and they want that contribution to be used for a specific purpose. Um, Honorable Minister Responsible for Health, you will stand by and join me to receive that um, contribution. But let me invite the executives of APSA to join me to introduce themselves uh, and to make that presentation to us. Welcome back. This is so TV3 New Day. Gone by was a press conference with the Ministry of Information <laughs> updating us on where we are as a country with regards to the coronavirus management. Takeaway for me uh, is out of the 4,560 people tested so far, we have 195 who have tested positive. Uh, uh, let me give you the breakdown. Greater Accra, 174. Northern Region, 10. I'm sure that you know that one person escaped. You're trying to trace that person. Ashanti Region, we have uh, nine. We have uh, Upper West, we have one. And Eastern Region, we have one. And so this is the breakdown for, for us. I think uh, uh, for me, my colleagues, for me, uh, the, the, what, what is clear uh, was what the minister said that we are not doing by force like mandatory testing mm -hmm. mass testing for everybody we're looking at frontline workers and if you look at the presidency mm -hmm. they said we've tested 99 people so far mm -hmm. and so i mean that's what you're doing you're looking at people who are providing mm -hmm. essential services i'm hoping that the media mm -hmm. they will be testing us soon so i hope so as well, well, well we know what our yeah if, i mean yeah, but if you look at the test essential. case now the 50,000 that was ordered are all not in we mm -hmm. have just about only about 30 uh, to 40. Yeah, a, a half of what was ordered. The minister didn't put an exact figure to it. Mm -hmm. You know, no, he but said even that a little well, above we have half. 20,000 from Jack Ma. Okay. And then maybe about Some 10, of which we have used already. Exactly. So, that, so the 50,000, the minister said what we ordered, we have got half. about half or a little above half. But what is it? It could be 25,000, it could be 27, it could be 30,000. 30, yeah. The exactitude at this point is crucial that we know mm -hmm. and then it will settle the minds of the people for example Absolutely. how we went about saying that we have uh, some 87 um, ventilators right. yeah. in the public sector yeah. and then compared adding what we have in the private in the sector private. could amount to some 200 mm -hmm. now what is the distribution mm -hmm. of these ones be, yeah. regionally mm -hmm. what is the reach and spread mm -hmm. we need to be told and, and to know yeah. but the key the key thing is that um, zero five 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 mm -hmm. three one one three one one again mm -hmm. zero five 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 three one one three one one that's the WhatsApp line so for those of you who are asking about brutalities from the security people issues about restriction issues about COVID-19 okay. and all of that is a WhatsApp line if you pick up your WhatsApp phone zero five 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 three one one three one one if you send hi to it and you tell them what's happening around where you, maybe you are a health worker yeah. or whatever it is mm -hmm. you're in a trot trot so just ask you to get down you could just send a hello or mm -hmm. hi to it and then they'll get back to you right. or you could call three one one and uh, connect with them and, and share but